Hi, it's Mark Bernard here with the Bernard Institute for Cybersecurity Excellence. And I'm here today to talk about the general data protection regulation in the circle of trust as it relates to cybersecurity. Now, I've been making a number of videos uh, to share knowledge about cybersecurity with my colleagues and uh, with new people who are interested in joining in the cybersecurity business. Uh, getting a job, there's over 3.3 million uh, cybersecurity vacancies today. These are great jobs. Uh, these jobs are not affected uh, by events like the pandemic. Uh, you can work at these jobs from home or just about anywhere. So it's a great opportunity for many people. If you check my uh, Vimeo website, you'll find that I have many videos there. Also on YouTube, I have many videos on cybersecurity that you can probably learn something from. If you have questions for me, you can always leave them in the comments at the bottom of the video, or you can uh, email me or call me. I'll leave that information at the, uh, at the end of the video so that you have uh, some reference, okay? So cybersecurity knows no bounds. This is so true. Cybersecurity is everywhere. And the General Prote uh, Data Protection Regulation, Circle of Trust, talks about that. So in the middle of our uh, information handling practice, we have men and women who handle private information all the time. So how do we know we can trust them? What are they doing with that private information, right? Uh, information handling is so important. So let me explain what the circle of trust is a little bit. So first of all, we have a layer of governance. Governance is very important. Governance is about deciding who gets access to private information. And what are they doing with that private information? Very important. To establish accountability in case there's a breach or in case there's some other kind of problem so that we can uh, address that. Information risk management is another key part of the circle of trust. And we want to identify what are the risks or the exposures to private information when we walk through the information handling practice and all the different uh, I guess tasks uh, that we go through as we as as that data passes through a life cycle of sorts. First of all, we talk about the information and how do we acquire it. Do we buy the information from a third party? Do we request information from our customers and ask for their consent to use it? Um, do we buy it through a company uh, that we've purchased through mergers and acquisitions? So some people don't realize this, but uh, when a company gets bought by another company, all their assets come with that company. And that includes any kind of customer lists or private information that that company might have accumulated or developed while they were in business. So acquiring information can happen in many different forms, as you can imagine. Sometimes we actually have to create information. So we can't buy the database already done. We need to build a database. So it becomes very unique to the organization. So Equifax has a very unique set of data about all the financial history of us uh, in their database, for instance. So they create it. Uh, they've been developing that and working it and, and expanding it. So it's a massive database. Another decision might be, how do we secure it? So when we get access to the information, and, and if you followed some of my other videos, including the one on uh, how to protect uh, or implement GDPR compliance in four steps, you'll recall that I talked about uh, doing risk assessments in order to determine what the risk is or the exposure is to the information asset. Very important. So how do we secure it? Can we share it? So this is another question. When you have personal information, can you share it? Well, if you collect information for a specific purpose, technically you cannot use it for a secondary purpose without going back to the customer and saying, hey, I need to use it for this too. Do I have your permission? Okay. So that's very important. Um, who you share it with, how you share it with. There may be a group of employees that are handling transactions, for instance, for your organization, and maybe they always have access to this information. Um, so, so they're authorized, uh, but they may not be authorized to share it. We may have it in a secure facility within a secure office uh, where these people work, and nobody else has access to that. If somebody asks, can I have a copy of that information? I think in most cases you're going to probably say no because it's private and it needs to be protected. 
Do you audit the handling of that private information? I mentioned this before also. Uh, in order to provide assurance over your practices and your processes that touch on personal information, you need to conduct audits. Now, whether they're internal audits or external audits, uh, it, it, the, very, the value varies, okay? So, but you do need to do audits. Do you add to the records? So if you create it and you own it 100%, you're probably going to maintain it. So you're probably going to add things to it. If you acquire it, you maybe not so much. You may not. You may have a CAN set of data that you use for a specific payment process or some other type of process. Maybe it's booking. Maybe it's health related. I don't know. But you may have a very specific uh, way of adding records or changing records. Can you use information? So this is another good question. So are you authorized to use it? That's the question that we usually ask in the privacy world is where did you get consent from? Because consent has to match the purpose of its use. So without having the consent, we can't really tell if the purpose is compliant or not. So we need to match both together. Can you use it? Can you change it? Probably not. Some personal information can't be edited, but it depends on what kind of business you're doing. Um, you know, obviously, like a passport number, employee's name or their address, those things might change, but uh, they're probably going to change from the employee notifying you. Can I archive it? Oh, well, that's a good question. How many instances of the personal information can you keep? Is there just one original and you have to maintain that somewhere and keep it safe and secure? That's what that is about, that question. Interface. Can I integrate it with other systems? Probably not because it could create a secondary purpose. And when you create secondary purposes, that means that you're no longer compliant with the regulation. Can you disclose it? Probably not. <laughs> because disclosing uh, personal information without permission is unauthorized disclosure. And that's a big problem because that is basically a breach of security. Can you consolidate it? So if you grab personal information from different sources, can you bring it all together and maybe converge it and build a, a larger record? So for instance, let's say you have a simple record of shipping some uh, materials or some kind of a gift to a person. And, uh, and now you want to expand on that. So can you consolidate that and make it uh, more useful? Can you migrate that data? Well, sometimes you have to, let's face it. Uh, but you need to have a privacy impact assessment done as a threat risk assessment to make sure that wherever you're migrating it to has at least the equal or greater level of security. Um, it is possible to migrate from system to system just because systems get tired and old and they need to be replaced. So you have to get the latest and greatest uh, new system in order to address that. Can you recycle information? So again, this gets back to the purpose. So if you have consent to collect it, to maybe administer uh, financial uh, services, um, can you recycle that information? So can you take that information and recycle it and use it for a different purpose? Probably not. Can you delete that information? Well, again, you might not be able to. The law might say that you have to keep that private information for a certain period of time before you can remove it. Now, some other questions you might have. What about external suppliers, including a vendor and third parties? What if they handle personal information? Well, they require flow down clauses. Remember, we talked about this earlier. So a flow down clause is very important because it takes all the requirements that your organization are applying to secure that personal information and it hands them off to the third party to make sure that they do it as well. So flow down clauses are very useful as well as just one second here sorry oh there we go okay so we have interested parties um, and uh, external requests for information so law enforcement may be asking you for information there may be government agencies asking you for personal information so do they have the lawful right to ask those questions and get access to it that's the question that we have to ask, right? Also, some organizations, especially legacy governments, they have these things called information sharing agreements. And the information sharing agreement is almost always uh, non-compliant with the GDPR because it was created a long time ago. 
before before we shared and collected private information on the internet. So it's probably uh, non-existent. And information sharing agreements uh, basically bypass all the laws and allow different ministries and different government entities to share information without consent, which is wrong, really. You need consent. It needs to be tied to a purpose. Um, and that purpose can't be, you know, spread so thinly that it says that everything that you do, it applies. So that's just not true. All right. So that's group. There we go. Okay. So here you go. So that's that's it. There's the life cycle of GDPR and all the different questions that you might have to answer around the handling of GDPR, of private information. You can reach me on the bernardinstitute.com. You can come and visit us. We have some training materials there that you might be interested in. You can also email me, markbernard at bernardinstitute.com. If you have any questions or there's something that we can help you with, that would be great. And if it's urgent, by all means, pick up the phone and call us at the phone number. Okay. You can find us on uh, LinkedIn, Facebook, YouTube channel, and Twitter. Okay. And uh, I think on uh, Facebook and LinkedIn, they have uh, s some some rules about how you access personal information, how you use it. Um, although there's been a lot of questions about big tech and how they use our personal information. So on these sites, uh, it's mostly just about contact and uh, sp spreading, you know, the, the, the contact structure out a little bit so that more people can get access to this uh, wonderful uh, knowledge that I'm sharing here that people can actually leverage and uh, improve their jobs or get new jobs in the privacy area in this case or other cybersecurity areas. Anyway, I want to thank you for your time. I hope that you found this useful. And if you did, please remember to like the video, share it with your friends. And if you have any questions, you can either email me directly or you can leave a comment at the bottom and I will surely find it. Okay. Thank you for your time and have a great day.